Welcome, my name is Matthew Goodman, the CSIS Simon Chair. Uh, we have just completed our annual CSIS JETRO conference on regional uh, economic integration in the Asia Pacific region, and I'm delighted to have with me uh, the speakers from that conference, and we're going to have a, a, a short chance to chat with them about their thoughts uh, following the conference. Uh, Chairman Ishige, let me ask you first. Uh, the U.S. and Japan announced progress on the Trans-Pacific Partnership when President Obama visited Japan in April, uh, but were unable to reach final agreement. What needs to happen to close the gap between the two sides, and when is this likely to happen? Yeah, that, that's a tough question, you know, if uh, I can answer such a question, <laughs> you know, I'll not be here. <laughs> okay, uh, having said that, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, according to the joint statement, uh, they made uh, very, very big progress. Actually, uh, the, uh, they, the both of them said uh, we would uh, uh, call upon the uh, TPP, other TPP, TPP partners uh, to take necessary step to conclude the uh, negoti negotiation. That means they are very, very close to the agreement. And uh, in addition to that, the uh, political leaders, as I said in, in, in the seminar, they have the uh, mutual trust. So uh, based on that, the uh, negotiators will be able to find the uh, common ground, find a solution. The, uh, the important point at this moment is that, you know, not to be greedy, not to be too ambitious, not to be too greedy, too ambitious, to refrain from uh, bringing in the uh, new, new ideas. Because the ambition should be held at the uh, start of the negotiation. We are going to reach the agreement. So it's time for us to make a compromise. Uh, the, uh, the important point, uh, the, the, the necessary thing is a sort of, uh, how to say, the political art of compromise to, to consider the uh, uh, counterpart's uh, position and uh, to know the red line of the other counterparts' uh, position. That's an important point. I don't have to go into the uh, details, uh, uh, spe specific uh, issues. And the timing, based, based on that, anytime soon, the bilateral negotiation can be concluded soon. That's my assessment. Professor Arata, what are the prospects for agreement among all 12 TPP partners? Uh, do you think that could happen this year? Um, frankly speaking, that may be a bit difficult. Uh, assuming that Japan and the U.S. reach some kind of agreement, uh, then uh, the issue, rulemaking uh, issues still remain. Uh, specifically speaking, uh, developed countries on the one hand and developing countries on the other hand, they have different views on issues such as intellectual property rights, state-owned enterprises, uh, investment. Uh, so it may take some time. But once Japan and U.S. settle their issues, I think the momentum is there, and hopefully early next year, uh, things will be done. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Lim, uh, the other major track of trade negotiations in the Asia-Pacific region, the so-called Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, uh, is also moving along. Do you think that that will be concluded, um, even if TPP moves forward, and, and should it be concluded? It would be uh, according to schedule, so end by uh, December 2015. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, the nature or the exact form of the completion uh, is yet to be determined. Uh, but uh, at this point in time, the uh, agreement on goods, I think, sh should not be a problem. On services, uh, there will be some of it, and also investment and flow of capital as well as other issues. So uh, RCEP will be uh, completed, although at this point in time it's quite slow in progress in negotiation. But as the case in ASEAN uh, trade negotiations or regional corporations uh, uh, procedures, it, it takes for a while and gradually accelerate. Dr. Zhang, uh, China is the host of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum this year in 2014. Uh, and they have revived the idea of a free trade area of the Asia Pacific. Uh, what is the thinking behind that in Beijing, and and what is the specific plan for getting to this um, ultimate objective? Uh, actually, I like to say that uh, uh, this idea 
it, it, it's not uh, a new idea provided by Chinese side. Uh, actually, uh, in 2006, the U.S. already, you know, provided this idea. Uh, meanwhile, Australia also, you know, suggested this idea. But just uh, in the past, uh, actually, uh, there was no TPP negotiation. There was no RCEP negotiation. Meanwhile, you can find that uh, a lot of important bilateral uh, free trade agreements, uh, uh, such as uh, you know Japan between Japan and Australia, between uh, South Korea and Canada, uh, this type of uh, bilateral FTA. Without this type of FTA, uh, you cannot imagine you know uh, FTAP uh, in the region. But today, I think that uh, the condition. Uh, and the foundation already changed, uh, obviously. Uh, you can find that uh, uh, both TPP and RCEP two track already get uh, obvious progress. Uh, meanwhile, important bilateral and trilateral FTA also provided uh, more and more you know, conditions for formulation of F FTAP in the future. But this time, uh, Chinese side just uh, suggests uh, uh, we conducted a feasibility study uh, on FTAP. Uh, that means we hope that uh, uh, all uh, economic entities uh, in APEC region, uh, we can work together, we can discuss uh, what will be the possible you know, roadmap for FTAP in the region. Uh, I think it's the right time for us to consider uh, this issue. Well, thank you very much. There are obviously a lot of very exciting developments happening in regional economic integration in the Asia-Pacific region, and I'm sure we'll all be watching closely to see how it comes out. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.